So, you know, like the movement of the pelvis, the, you know, on the hips, right? Because that's really what we're talking about. The, you know, the movement of the diaphragm and the pelvic floor, that's sort of a movement where you get this compression in the intra-abdominal pressure, which leads to an expansion. That's, that's referred to as the, the explosive force in Tai Chi or Fa Jin. Movements of the pelvis, if we were to continue with the pelvic clock, we could also perform them in standing, right? So I could essentially tuck my tailbone under and then pull it out from under behind me, right? So just go back and forth like that, right? Or I could go side to side Right. And, and I can feel, you know, this engages my rib cage, right? It gets shorter on this side that goes up, longer on the other side. And then, of course, I can go into those circular patterns, or if I want to do diagonals or figure eights, right? We can all do that. You can do big circles, you can do small circles. But when you get into the, the movement experts, you know, for the, the, the pelvis and the, the, the abdominal region, I think of belly dancers, especially hip hop dancers or African dancers as well, right? Because they, they, you know, they, they do things that, that give rhythm to the movement. And what they do is they, they differentiate the movement of the hips from the rest of the body, right? The same way the head could be held calm, you know, as, as I tilt side to side, right? So I could go slow. I could go into, in a, you know, I could attempt to do a circle. I'm not that good at belly dance. I've looked at some videos, right? Tracing circles, you know, in the sagittal plane, you know, you could try to trace circles in the horizontal plane. And you could also try to trace circles in the coronal plane like that. All right, so that this would be more of kind of a methodical exploration of hip and pelvic movements. And of course, if I wanted to, I could do something similar with the chest and the shoulder girdle, right? So I could move my chest forward and up or I could move it down. Right, so I could do something like that, or I could go sideways, sideways, and then I could essentially make a circular pattern with the chest. All right, so again, like in the belly dance drills that I've studied, what I see is the instructor maintains a calm frame, right? So the arms head would be relatively stationary, you know, as they would differentiate the thoracic cage, right? The rib cage, I'm not doing it very well, but, you know, being able to articulate these different parts of the, the body are really helpful to improve ordinary functional activities like walking, for example. Right, the undulations are interesting as well. 
you know, where you would draw the lower abdominals in, and then the upper abdominals would come down, and then you release, and you come up into extension, and then you just repeat that type of a movement as you go through that. Again, nothing to compare myself to Shakira, but it gives you an appreciation for what they're capable of doing. So what I feel is as a, as a martial artist or Tai Chi practitioner, it's really helpful to develop this control of the core musculature, the pelvic floor, the diaphragm, the hips, all right? Because then, then as you as you you know develop that that expression of power, it could it could translate into into whatever the you know the the part of your body that that should be issuing power, all right? So it's also fun just to to listen to to music. You know, to get, I think that's probably the easiest way to start to learn some of these movements, right? So, because you get the, you get that rhythmic action going on, you know, and then that's, you know, that's, that's the way I like to practice Tai Chi lately is just to put on some of that type of hip hop music or trance that, that gives me that sort of a, a feeling of an up, down, up, down, up, down. And then as I practice, I'm able to feel more of a sense of connection from the from the earth right so I, I can get that elastic energy to travel more effectively through my body but if we if if we go into into this this dynamic of a of a, of a punch there's on the external level there there is the rotation of the hip right so my pelvis rotates like that, and then you'll see this kind of a thing right, as you're trying to initially figure it out there. Right? This arm is, is connected, so this arm is pulling back. Right? So I, I like to think you know, that you're not pushing the punch, right? It's, it's being pulled as, as it goes out there, so you're relaxed, and then it's, it's pulled. Right, so once you get that movement making sense, right, in the in the hips, the legs, the feet, then you can start to go into to something that's that's a little more internal. Right. So so what I what I do is I kinda I feel like I'm a I'm a syringe, right? So I've got the plunger and I start to on, on this leg, I'm going to pull the plunger up, right? So it creates a suction effect. So I pull it up, pull it up, pull it up. And at the same time, I'm like a, I'm, I'm like a spiraling slinky, right? So a coiled spring. So the spring is coiling and compressing as I, as I have that intention. And this, this leg is still active. You know, this leg would be 70% full, let's say. This leg is 70% full with my mental attention, right? This is more my physical attention. So I'm here. And then you would release the, the tension, right? So it's like, you, you know, I've, I've pulled that energy in and then it just goes release, right? So you pull it and you release, pull, release. Pull into the ground, feel the compression, release. Right after that, I start to think. It's not necessarily sequentially, but these are things that I think about. I think about pulling pressure into my back. Right, so we call it reverse breathing. This region in Tai Chi is referred to as the Ming Men. I inhale, pulls into the back. And that gives me this, this feeling like my spine is 
going into the shape of a bow, All right? So that's creating tension in the spine, All right? So I've got tension in my leg, All right? Tension in my hip, tension in the back, and I've got tension in the pelvic floor and the diaphragm, All right? My spine, it's like a slinky as well, All right? There's this coiling energy. So everything's basically just kind of being tensed up, tensed up, tensed up, tense, 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 and then you release it. All right, so that's that's basically the the coordination of the elements that would give you that that really interesting rapid punch that that's fun to do. You like when you practice some of these Chen style forms, All right? So. I could I could do the same thing, you know, with you know with the elbow strike, right? So it's the same principle. You know, I kind of pull that that plunger up, I get that that feeling of rootedness, and then there goes the elbow, or you know, maybe it's uh it's a shoulder, right? So someone, you know, it's like your shoulder certainly can be a weapon. It doesn't matter what direction you go, right? So it's it's this feeling that the power comes up from the ground. Everything happens at once. <laughs> Strike, and then you relax. Right? That's that's how I interpret the Fajin action. Of course, you know it's you know Fajin is not necessarily just explosive power. It's it's just this sense of how you gather and you collect the energy, and then you release. Right. So I know this. You know, this video kind of started with uh, with the hips, right? But it's, you know, the hips are just part of the picture. You know, the last the last sort of aspect that I would think of with uh, with the punching with, uh, with the Fajian is this pushing the energy down and bringing it up, right? It's like a basketball, right? So it goes down, it comes up. Right, it goes down, it comes up. So as, it, as the energy comes up, I'm storing, in effect, what I would feel as potential energy. And then at the, mo at the moment of a strike, there's, there's the release, right? So it's like I'm up and then, <laughs> then it's down. So, so as, as I deliver that intention of a strike, the opponent, if it's a throw or if it's a strike or whatever, the opponent would experience the feeling of being thrown down. Right, so it's if it's a punch, it's still like it has like a down energy, right? There's a down energy, right? Contrast that with this this feeling of the syringe or that that coil. It's like I start down, and then I finish, and it goes up. So so there could be, you know, it could be here, and you you would throw someone or punch someone, and it would give the sense that there's a pop that just sends them flying away. So it's just two, just two interesting ways of kind of looking at the, the this Fajin experience, right? So you don't get just stuck doing the exact same thing, right? Because that's, if you keep doing this, you know, something the exact same way, the, the learning is just gonna, the learning curve is just gonna go down the drain. So the more different ways you do something, the better, the better it's gonna be for, for learning. Right, so you could you know, perform this in, in a different stance. You know, like right now I'm in a in a classic bow stance. You know, maybe it's gonna be kind of like a rowing motion, right? So I'm pulling it down and then like that sort of a thing. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Right, or it could be pulling down, right, syringe, bowing, right, so it's gather, gather into the center, release, something like that, right. So in Aikido, we would have this kind of a classic rowing exercise that we would do before every class. Back when I was practicing Aikido, I didn't have any clue uh, to some of these Tai Chi principles. So once I screwed my body up enough, I had to quit Aikido. It would be interesting to 
to get on the mat again and see how it goes, but that's not going to happen. All right, so I kind of started this exploration, you know, just with the with this pelvic clock. All right, so link the pelvis to the other parts of yourself. That's the whole point of this this whole exploration in this video series that I'm doing. You move your pelvis, you feel the feet. You know, it's like your feet are making a circle. There's all kinds of adjustments happening in the joints, the ankles, the knees. And of course you feel it in the spine, right? So depending on whatever you do. You know, and then and then play play with uh, variations, you know, as, as you do these things. You know, take take a few minutes, you know, two or three minutes during the week and just just explore some of these different patterns and then see how it feels standing, see how it feels walking. You know, and over time, your nervous, your nervous system will start to integrate some of these possible moving patterns into your daily life and things can actually get better and easier. Thank you.